Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another Mud Buddy live episode. Today we're here, um, actually in the warehouse. We, we have Micah back, thank God. <laughs> and we have Keith here as well. And we're actually at our mounting and assembly line here at the Mud Buddy Motors. Um, and today we're going to be answering your questions live once again. It is a new year, so happy new year as well. Um, and you know how it works. Go ahead and shoot in your messages live. We'll answer those live for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let Keith and Micah go ahead and take this over. And we also have Ian, who will be also assembling it for us. And he's one of our top guys here. Um, <laughs> and he's camera shy. But um, we'll go ahead and get this going. So um, real quick, how was your New Year's Eve? Pretty good. Yeah, it was nice, safe. And we just had a good dinner and watched a movie and celebrated the New Year with the family. And you hurt your so, back recently, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. That yeah, was... The ice is slippery, and I was grabbing a bag of ice melt out of my hey guys, truck, and uh, welcome back. but I'm gonna survive. <laughs> yeah, that's always good. Yeah, yeah. Nothing painkillers can't fix. Yeah. Um, and then what about you, Keith? Did you do anything? I just hung out with the family mainly. Didn't do much of all. Just hung out at home. Uh, keep it, keep Stay it simple, home. right? Safe. <laughs> All right, so um, go. you guys know how it is. Go ahead and shoot in your messages. We'll go ahead and start answering them for you guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let Keith and Mike explain what's happening here as he's mounting the engines and getting it going. And as we're doing it, just let us know what you have. All right, guys, we've got Ian over here. He's our... Uh he builds all of our mounts and he assembles the engines on them. He's got the mounts already prepared. Um, he's about ready to set up a brand new 37 EFI to some lucky customer who ordered this motor. It's being built now. Uh, doesn't have a name on it or I tell you who the lucky person was. Basically right now he's putting on a uh, gasket on the back of the uh, motor and he's holding it up to the casting. That helps keep the water out, keep everything uh, dry also allows the casting to slide up and down as they uh, adjust for the belt tension. He's got about four bolts to put in there uh, and then uh, four for the back of the motor and then also four on the, uh, the engine block down to the base plate. So Scott just hopped on and he said you can go ahead and put his name on it. Okay, Scott. Right, Scott. You just, <laughs> just send us your credit we card number. <laughs> we need a credit yeah. card number and uh, your. What we can do is we can put your name on. Uh... Hey, hey, so how about that, Scott? How about we can't throw you a new motor, but we'll throw you a new uh, Mud Buddy shirt. So uh, just PM the guys and you got yourself a Mud Buddy HDR t shirt. Let us know the size too because this one's. Uh, I don't have my glasses. I think it's an extra large, but I know oh, it's a large. But we can get you whatever you need. <laughs> so, is it the same with the um, all the engines, how they mount it, and everything, or is it different per engine? Um, all of the big block vanguards are the same. The Kohler is a little bit different, and also the Mini. It's just mainly a little bit different hardware to. Uh, adapt the stuff to the mainframe assembly. Same sequence, same belt tension, all that stuff. Um, the way the motor's aligned when he tightens it up, you're going to notice that he's going to have the belt housing tight before he tightens it to the motor. And then he'll tighten the motor up. And these four he's working with down here, he'll lock those down. And then he can go ahead and loosen that housing back up. And that aligns it to where you've got a 90 degree angle so you have a good belt angle. Awesome. And so we have uh, Matt Grant here. He said, will a mud motor just go on a regular V-Hall aluminum? Would it need a uh, B-fed up transom? Um, is it all welded boat? If it's an all welded boat, you're fine. You, you wouldn't really need to be that much. Um, the riveted boats are the ones you got to watch out for. And it's mainly with trailering. It's not so much when you drive the boat in the water. It's trailering where all that weight and force rips them apart. So, okay. Yeah, it's it, he'd be fine. Um, so, uh, Casey Barr said, "I want a shirt." <laughs> oh, I want a lot of things too, Casey. But <laughs> Casey, and we'll send you a duck off. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Sanders says, this is neat. I love learning new information. Your innovations are great. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yep. Um, and then Casey Barr said, got a 44 EFI also. Good. Nice. Good, Good choice. 
Um, and then Eric said, best mud motor in the business. Love mine. Thanks. Yep, thank you. And then James Hamilton said, did someone say free stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Everything always gets your attention on it. <laughs> um, Scott Eisler said, so I have a, a 1548 low. What do you suggest? On a 1548, depends on how much he loads it up. Check your horsepower rating and just go somewhere right around that horsepower rating. If you go over, you can get in trouble. So you want to watch out for that. Okay. Uh, Michael Campbell just hopped on. He says, been looking around, planning on repowering my 1660 this summer. And then uh, we had Wade Simmons. Will they ever have an EFI kit for the 44 HDR carb model? We probably won't, but I'm sure there's something aftermarket out there. There is aftermarket ones that you can get. They're pretty pricey. So. And where I would you know. look to get those at? Just Google? on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just search it. Okay. There's some aftermarket ones. Awesome. And Mark hopped on. He says, "What is the best oil for his 4400 HDR?" When you're breaking it in, run a conventional 1030 weight. After you get 10, 20 hours on it, you can switch to a synthetic. Royal Purple, we like that stuff. Um, any good quality oil is fine, 1030 weight. If you're running 20 degrees or lower, you might want to switch to a 530 weight. It'll start a little easier. So. And how often uh, should you actually change out your oil? Every 20 to 25 hours. Because we use them hard, you know. Uh, on standard uh, engine, just cruising, not being real hard on it, you can get away with 50 hours. But 20 to 25 hours. Awesome, awesome. And so where are we at in the process right now with what's going on here? It looks like you just threw another lucky customer's motor on and sticking the bolts in the back. Um, he hasn't gotten to the, uh, the adjustment part for making sure the motor's aligned properly and all that. I think he was going to kind of go down the line, but maybe we'll have uh, Ian jump back and uh, show us how he tightens up the casting and then locks down the motor so we get that... Um, 90 degree angle and we get the alignment that we need for the belt tension in that. All right, so we have a Taylor Lightsey. Um, his question is, why do you like the Royal Purple? It's just a good quality oil. I mean, there's, it's an opinion, you know, there's a lot of different brands out there to choose from, but the Royal Purple is pretty available most places. So that's why we like to go with it because it's not hard to get. Uh, so Scott, Scott Garvin put a 2017 HDR and 35 hours. Pop has a slow turn while idling. It hasn't had before. Normal or clutch adjustment? Um, there's not really much adjustments you can make on the clutch. So, um, but his biggest question is why is um, his pop has a slow turn and why idling it hasn't had before? Probably you might want to check the oil on the transmission, yeah. make sure that oil level's good. Um, other than that, it depends on how many hours it has on it. Um, newer ones will spin a little bit. Shouldn't propel the boat, though. Okay, and we have another uh, thing here from Mark Harl. He says, seriously, guys, I'm sure I speak for so many. You guys are awesome and these videos really help. I'm back from my deployment just in time to enjoy duck season here in Florida. Good for you, glad you're yep. back. Thanks Thank for you your service. Much. Thank you, yeah, we appreciate it. Hey, how about a, uh, we're gonna go with an Optifade Mud Buddy Timber hat. So uh, PM, PM us your information, bro. We'll get this hat off to you. And again, thanks for your service. Yep, thank you. Um, and so we have Mark Strobel here. He says, can you use Amsoil? Yes, you can use Amsoil. That's a good brand. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. So. Um, and then Michael Campbell. So how's it going, Mark? <laughs> How are you doing, Mark? Mark? Do you guys know Mark? <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> okay. Mark's trying to pull one on us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Michael Campbell put 1660 Monarch Transom is rated for 40 HP. What size mud buddy would you suggest for this boat? Um, some type of 35 or bigger, somewhere around there. You know, um, how many people he's going to be taking, how much speed he really wants. And, you know, you just kind of, like I said, want to go with the horsepower rating on the boat. You don't want to exceed that. So 
Yeah. And that's very important, right? Yeah, yeah, for the law it is, yeah. yeah especially <laughs> the, especially right. if the, the uh, cops are running around looking for you. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, uh, so we have Mark Strobe. He gave you guys a thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up, Mark. Thanks. <laughs> and then Matthew Sanders, new to the realm of mud motors. I run a Merc 25 HP two-stroke outboard. Very thrifty on gas. I intend on moving into a mud motor on the next vessel. We all pay to play, but I have to ask, how efficient are Mud Buddy motors on fuel compared to a traditional outboard? You could probably get about twice the amount of fuel mileage out of them. They're really fuel efficient, so you're not going to find a motor that's more fuel efficient than a mud motor. They, you can run on a five-gallon tank all day, you know, and it's not mixed gas. It's just straight gas, you know. If you're running a two-stroke outboard, it's even worse, so... They're really good. There's no problems with that. Okay. And so we'll pan back over here to Ian, and we'll see what's going on with him. How you doing, Ian? <laughs> <laughs> you getting her together? <laughs> so first I'm going to tighten up these bolts. That You're going to have to talk really loud. I got yeah. you right here. This is the station that I was telling you about to align the motor before you uh, lock these four Base, base bolts down. All the remote steer models get this handle. So if you need to lift the prop out of the water by hand or something, you can pull it down. They're pretty convenient and handy to have. Yeah, definitely. Scott Garvin uh, just came on and said, new trim on the grab bar, now that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And just, yeah, just to let you guys know too, also a lot of the stuff that Ian's put together here, all of our sheet metal, all of our aluminum castings, all that stuff is done here locally in Utah. We've got a laser cutter that cuts off our flat stuff. We've got a welding shop. We've got a powder coater. All of our aluminum is poured by a foundry just up here in downtown Salt Lake. So most of what you see on there, except for the motor, it's homegrown here in Utah. And we kind of pride ourselves for using the better part of everything we do is built here in the USA and local to where we're at. So we take care of our people here and the companies that we support them and they support us by giving us good quality products too. Yep. Uh, Matthew Sanders came back and he said, thanks guys, I appreciate the opportunity to get a little more educated. Um, and then we have Ron here, he says, love my new Mud Buddy motor. Should I run 91 octane or ethanol free fuel in it? Um, 91 is fine. Uh, what uh, octane is the ethanol free fuel that you're running? Do, do, can you ask him that? <laughs> what, what's the octane on the ethanol free fuel? Yeah, and send in that message and we'll go ahead and answer you back. Yeah. It's um, best to run 91 octane. Yeah, and so we have Cade here. He says, are your transmissions in-house slash local? Yeah. Yep, those are all in-house and local. Okay, and so we have Jason Wooten. What type of warranty does the motor come with? And what is the average life in hours on the motor if you change oil as recommended 25 hours? The average hours is 2,500. That's what they're rated for. Um, standard maintenance is kept up. And then as far as um, any other maintenance on the drive, you know, you just got to follow the instructions that we have on our website. Um, there's lots of information on our website about lubing them up and all that stuff. Um, and as far as the warranty goes, you got a three year on the engine and one year on the outdrive. So that's on a 35 and then the 44s is one year on everything. 
And if they make modifications to the engine, does that break the warranty? Yeah, I avoid the warranty. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Ron Duncan came back and he says he believes it's an 88. 88, yeah. So you could run like a octane booster with that and be fine. Um, so either way you go, um, if if you run that fuel and your motor's not making a pinging noise or you don't hear any detonation, you'd probably be okay to run it. But the 91's going to be the better choice. You just don't want to let the 91 sit for a long period of time because it'll gum up. Okay. So. And we're going to come back and see where uh, see where Ian's, Ian's at. at here. He doesn't move much, but he tries. <laughs> trying to be quiet. <laughs> Um, Ian, how long does it take to build like one motor? If you're doing one motor start to finish in this station, how long does that take? About an hour. About an hour. Uh, Ryan, Ron came back and said, right on guys, thanks for the info. And then uh, Michael Campbell came back and said, two to three people plus gear fast enough to get on plane. Um, and then Shane Starling, I have a 55 Mac pushing an 1854 Prodigy with 200 hours on it, still strong. Nice, good. Yep. And then um, Corbin Wilcox says, Ian is a movie star. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we know. <laughs> uh, Matthew Sanders asks, is it fine to use sea foam or other stabilizers in the fuel? Sure. Yeah, you can run any additive. It's good to run an additive in the fuel, uh, especially if you don't use it as much on certain times of the year. So, a stabilizer is good to run. There's some uh, stabilizer called Startron. You can get it at many different stores, and that's good stuff. That works fine. And what do you use personally? I use Startron, yeah. Never had any issues with it, you know, a lot of customers use it. Ian, on average per day, how many of these would you say you do? About eight to ten. Eight to ten a day by yourself? Uh, with help. With help, all right. Well, well, sure. <laughs> you should have lied and just said just me. No. <laughs> Nobody would have known. No. And so what's the next step here? Um, I'm only gonna put the handles on and then do transmissions and clutches. Awesome. That's a secret. You can't see me do that. Uh, so we have Sean with Swiss Water. He said, very cool, guys. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Oh, okay. oh yeah. I was going to give this to I'm gonna Taylor. S I'm going to sweep yeah, in this other way here so we can. Asked the question earlier. So, and what's that again, Micah? Um, for this is for Taylor. He, he asked a question earlier. It was a good question, so I'm going to. Give them this. All right. It's a good DVD, Echo Calls. It's fun to watch. There's a lot of good stuff in it. So yeah. Might even learn how to blow a duck call a little better. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So uh, PM us your address and information, and we'll go ahead and send it out. We're yeah. going to go ahead and end it here, guys. Um, next week, we'll be doing the second station, so you can actually see the second part and how it moves forward. Um, if you guys do still have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment sections, and Keith will go ahead and hop on and message to you guys, or I will. Um, once again, thanks for joining us and uh, come back next week. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, we'll see you. See you.